you among among the panel up here, you've kind of got the unique perspective of coming from a company uh, that you know in the past uh, primarily wouldn't have been regarded as a, an imaging company, a projection company, or you know video company. Uh, you know, and, and MA Light is, is charged right out there. Uh, can you tell? You know, and I know this isn't specifically your part of what goes on there, but is it affecting the company's culture in terms of thinking about controlling video? Like, you know, when the Grand MA was invented, uh, I think that was maybe uh, a distant dream, and now I think it's a center function of control. And so, as you develop the MA2, and as as that control architecture that you continue to work on is now video becoming a, a half partner to lighting in terms of the way that your, your company thinks about it? Um, interesting question. Um, yes and yes. You and can no. defer if it goes too deep. But. Y yes and no. Um, so basically our, what we call the core competence of our company is control. Um, we do control systems, um, so we could expand that on the video section as well. Um, but we turned around and said, okay, we do lighting because we have this vision um, that we say, okay, the lighting designer is responsible, for, yeah, no, he's responsible for the emotions in the room. So together with the sound guy, maybe, but he's doing it in a different way. We're not touching his, we're not influencing his way, but for the rest of the emotions, um, basically the lighting designer is taking care of. So he decides if he has ambient lights and how that looks and whatever. Um, and the broad, coming from that broadcasting background, um, the guys doing broadcasting, they are more responsible for the information in that room. So if they transport a picture, it doesn't matter on concert touring, um, uh, any field you can look into, uh, if they present the quantifier of the, the singer or whatever, this is more information they transport. Because in that moment, the, the emotion doesn't matter. They just make this available to a big crowd, for example. Um, so we said, okay, we step back. Um, stepping back in that way, then we say we do the lighting control. We have this vision to make the emotion come, coming through in that room or make that true. Um, so video control, in our terms, is make this available to lighting people. So. Um, you see many functionalities, we have seen that with uh, Pandora's box and Hypnotizer, that's why we think we are not big competitors, we're actually working together in, in, in several projects, um, because we control it, or we try to control it, it's maybe the better we know at point, um, but we are not too much into influencing the video. So, it sounds too negative if I say we just play back. We manipulate the, the movie as well. We can do that our still images or three-dimensional objects. Um, but our competence is to make this happen seamlessly, synchronized uh, with whatever else is in the room and depends on the lighting. So our point of view is uh, lighting control. And from there, we said, okay, if we do this, we're not developing a product or a new department that now is called media server department. We just turn it the other way around and said, okay, in our network, in our system, one part is missing. And that's something like a video processing unit. And that's actually the name that gave the name for our kind of media server, which is called VPU or video processing unit. And it should show that this is very related to our network processing unit, which just gives you DMX output. So um, this fits should fit into our system and it should be controllable uh, in the way that a lighting designer can tell you a command as he does on channels. He will tell you, okay, take channel one to five at 25% of these. And then you type that on the command and it works. And this is actually our goal, that we can go there, have this VPU, and later the lighting designer will say something like, okay, take that screen number or whatever, so give it a picture ID and you say, picture uh, 510, uh, make that green, and put the uh, put some fire on it, uh, please. And then, I'm not too sure if we really ever reach that goal, but this is the best idea to have, that the lighting designer said, tells you this command straight away, and type it in, it's done. Um, 
we are far away from this one today. And um, that's actually our competence when we go for our idea when we say as a control, lighting control company, we're looking into this. And it's we figured out ways to do this, um, but that means also means we need to cut off things we cannot do anymore then. So um, we will see how that works out. But it definitely influences the structure of what we do. Yeah, I, I think it has to. I mean, one of the sticky notes that I got at the beginning said, you know, when will lighting designers start calling projectors light fixtures? Uh, uh, and I think, yeah, they, I think some already do. And I think those that don't are, are very quickly are going to. Because, you know, I used to describe my, you know, people used to say, well, are you a lighting designer? You know, 10 years ago or so, I was stuck with that with this. I would say, you know, video is just highly complex billboard work. work. Uh, so, uh, you know, and, and, and you know, we're going to get into it with the DIY panel a little bit later when we start to talk about the future. But I, I think it's just a matter of time until moving lights are predominant. You know, if we go a decade down the line, I think it's it's from, right moving lights are already, will we'll be primarily projectors rather than that being the exotic top level. Light. I think that most of them will be projectors and will be more exotic. But if you look at what the Wacken Group, I mean, since I uh, belong to the Wacken Group, if you look what they did, starting with the idea of DL1 uh, over DL2 to DL3, and now the DL1200 Wacken, um, this is basically a moving light that has um, kind of DL P chip or like a video source in it that is driven by the global. And, um, we would be, I think we would be quite stupid if we not take care of features like that as the lighting control uh, manufacturer because uh, this will definitely change the actually yeah, view or the um, yeah, emotion of the room on our stage. So, um, and if you start trying to control 12 of those lighting fixtures, I mean, it's, it's not only choosing the right content, it's not only the keystone. This thing is moving, and if you want to step away from just having a moving effect, um, I saw a nice movie for, of one band where they used um, a projector, this very thin um, dot that looks like a laser in the end when it moves through, through the fog. Um, but if you want to step away from this one, just having an effect, if you want to create um, any kind of object on stage that is fitted with this projector. Um, we need a different control solution for it, definitely. And um, yeah, somehow we need to get this, from our point of view, into the lighting control console because we want to stay the captain of the boat if it comes to the stage. It, and it's interesting that it went that way. You know, it's, uh, uh, I, I don't know that 15 years ago I would have guessed it was the, would be the lighting desk. Uh, that was running everything. Although, if I thought about it for a while, it probably would have made sense, you know. Uh, but here we are, and it is. 